Hello, it's Chuck from Above the Basement, Boston Music and Conversation. We're not trying to tell you what to think, is what Francis Jalbert tells us about the philosophy behind every Cirque du Soleil production. Luzia, a waking dream of Mexico, is no different. The creativity that is the genius of Cirque combines movement, music, color, light, and the element of risk all in one show, and at the same time beautifully embeds culture. The audience can dream with these incredible performers as they navigate the story and flavor of Mexico. Luzia is two and a half years old and has been wowing audiences on its U.S. tour. We sat with vocalist Majo Cornejo, acrobat Kelly McDonald, and football freestylers Laura Biondo and Abu Traore as they finished two more weeks in our neighborhood before moving on to Mexico for a four-month tour. And it was a special day at Suffolk Downs as the gang at Luzia was visited by Femi Hollinger Jansen of the New England Revolution to share some soccer skills, learn, and chat freestyle. So here is our conversation with Cirque du Soleil, recorded at Suffolk Downs in Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you for joining us. I saw it with my family on Wednesday night, and I gotta, I gotta say, I don't use this word very often. Fantastic? No, I use that a lot. Phenomenal? No. See, you don't, you don't use it very often. That's why I use it him a lot. So. I, the first word that came to me, I'm like, this is wonderful. When the butterfly with the horse behind it. That's good. That's the very beginning. That's th- the reaction we want. That's immediate reaction. I'm like, this is wonderful. I never use that word. But and I think it's a good feels, description. It yeah. is a good description. Because <laughs> if you've never seen Cirque du Soleil, everything that goes on stage, it's just, it's phenomenal. There you go. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. You like that? What we have with us to my right is uh, Francis, Francis, from originally from Montreal, but touring for the last, what, several years with Cirque du Soleil. Yes, I'm managing public relations for the show, so I'm the publicist of Lucia. He's been our guide back and forth. uh, Making sure he doesn't steal anything. And we have uh, Maho. 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 um, (laughs) Who is the, uh, the singer, the vocalist, and we also have Kelly. Yes. We're so psyched that you guys are together because I think in what comes to mind is Adagio. That's right. Speaking of Chuck's word, I would say it was a wonderful combination of sound, light, and movement. Thank and you so much. Maybe to start with what Chuck was kicking off, the fact that you have this awe moment that you inspire every night, how do you do it the next night? What is some of that magic that goes in your head when you're about to get on stage? I was talking with my coach about that like 10 minutes ago, and I think for me it's the public. I have a big responsibility every night because we have to touch, we have to give something to the public that is looking at us every night. So sometimes I can see the faces of boys, girls, and they are like, wow, mom, I want to be there. I want to do that. Wow, the acrobat is amazing. Wow, I want to play guitar. So we have the responsibility like an artist to do our best every night. When you look out at us gawking with our mouths open, especially the kids, with our eyes wide open, like shocked, like what's going on in front of them, and they have no choice but to be inspired. Right. So I think part of it is what Maho said is that's why we're here. That's not only our job, but what we love to do is to give something to the public. But that's true. We connect with the public. We make eye contact, we can see different emotions, whether you're amazed, inspired, it's your uh, escape for the day just to come to an amazing show like this. But we feed off that too. So that gives the energy, that gives emotion, that gives more drive to continue what we're doing and to give the best in every act and to make it feel new for us because we've done over 850 shows now, but everybody watching it's their first time seeing it or i hope exactly. i hope they come yes. back but it's right. somebody's <laughs> first time every time we perform again so it has to be something fresh that we're giving to them and not something of off the conveyor belt that we provide that's true however you really have to concentrate yes. so Absolutely. how do you balance yeah. no pun them. intended <laughs> how do you t- to feed off people is one thing but to really have this exact science down of balance and technique. I mean, look, the- you could die. There is things you do on stage <laughs> that could kill you. Chuck's gonna cut I'm not, the chase here. I'm not even yeah. kidding. It's, I mean, everyone's amazed by the beauty and the music, but they're also terrified at certain points. Like, oh my God, right. they're right. coming right at me. And yeah. it's like so how really- that person's lived, lived to tell the tale. That's everything we do before we get on stage. So that's my 20 years of experience before I joined Cirque du Soleil. That's my background from 
building the strongest basics I can to building bigger acrobatic tricks to joining a team where they can throw and catch to the creation of this show where we did for my act we did seven months before we opened the show of building the act learning from each other building the best skills we could do and be consistent for 10 shows a week so we continue that training back here in the artistic tent where we're sitting now um, we continue that in our lifestyles to stay healthy and maintain our training, our strength, everything we have to do with our team. You're athletes. Exactly. And so then that's the preparation so that when we're on stage, we have the concentration that we need to perform the acrobatics, to feel the act, and then we feed and make it more emotional, make it Cirque du Soleil, give that wow factor right. by feeding off the public. And yeah. so it's not a competition. It's not something where you have to follow rules in a box or a code of points. You have these skill sets and then you get to make it wow by sharing it with the energy of the audience. Yeah. I want to hear Francis's perspective uh, because I, I think what you're saying too is that there's a certain innate thing that you've worked on that becomes the foundation and this is just the icing. You know, Absolutely. This is that yeah. wow factor. I yeah. mean, it's entertainment. So our goal is that while you're sitting in the audience is that everything has to look easy, but at the same time you have to feel the emotions. You have to feel the risk. That's why you come to circus. There's that risk element that keeps you on the edge of your seat. It's part of, uh, of what this art form is. And I think that's what they do on a daily basis as well, is to make people feel that and make sure they don't lose connection with that as well. So in Maho, this is a different skill that you bring. There's that beauty of, of the vocal one of the reasons why we're sitting here today is really the beauty of music that connects with movement and the wow factor and entertainment. When you're on stage, this is certainly a question about the preparation as well, but when you're in that moment, do you feel like you're connected with the movements? Yeah, of course, especially with Kelly in Adagio. It's the only song during all the show that we don't use click, uh, that we don't have a time right. the for metronome the song. In your we ears. are following yeah. them all the time so sometimes if they have a problem or the treadmill is not um, it's not spinning around there yeah, or, if there's yeah, a or technical something issue. yeah we have to follow them all the time like we so have tell me to about that emotion that because uh, i saw it a couple weeks ago chuck and joe just saw it so it's maybe more fresh in their mind but i tell you being here it brings it back talk about that connection okay yeah <laughs> i feel so fortunate that we have Maho, we have the other musicians on the stage during the act. So the music is always live, but sometimes you won't see the musicians, even though they're following us either on a screen backstage or on the stage with us. But in Adagio, I'm making eye contact with Maho all the time. I'm feeling her breath and her song, and I know that she's with me because it's in our movements that she has to portray the music to what my body is doing. And it's magical you know in, that she's with you absolutely and, and maho just, yeah maho just smiled just ended up by man <laughs> yes and for sure how, was that I, one of the first times you ever heard her say that or no we really yeah, we I have, have our yeah, moments yes. on stage even though i have i love kelly <laughs> and i love how yes we have a connection and it's magic pure real every night it, it yeah. feels so it feels so real to us so yeah. in that in that connection when you're singing maybe things are lengthened out because they got to regroup something something didn't work or it's working so well you want to do it again whatever it is you're improvising up there with your voice aren't you yes that's why we are using in ears uh, every show so if something happened i have my band leader here like okay majo we're going to repeat the first chorus right now okay <laughs> Come on, wait a second tell you gotta, you gotta explain that again these are in ears yeah and there's people it's talking uh, to you you're personal talking monitors we are using personal monitors for the show so the stage manager is saying maho no or, the sta a stage manager to my boss and my boss to me in your experience is that improvisation is that yes. i need to do this again or i need to lengthen this out is this something new to you i mean at least new when you joined cirque or is this something that you had experience with before I, I mean, certainly it's a different, no, whole I different kind like of world. No, I worked like this before, but, but I think with this type of pressure, yeah, it's the first time here in Cirque because they are so uh, preciso, precise. Yes. Yeah. So you have to be focused all the time. And you're reacting to people jumping yes. over you, and and you have to smile and sing and listen to your stage, uh, stage manager, blah, blah, blah. Yes. This this production, like many others in Cirque, are from there's act actors, uh, performers, musicians from all over the world. And so sometimes there's not even a lot of English that's spoken. Absolutely. Um, I would think you communicate with non, like non-verbally, I would think. 
Um, Absolutely. <laughs> I think you, you have to, or you find ways to charades your way to the communication. But on stage, there's looks and feelings and breaths that you communicate with. Backstage, just on my team, there's four different languages spoken. And so... You Over have. time, do you learn the languages? Do you guys you learn, pick up You learn things? words. Right. You learn ways to communicate. Yeah, certain words Absolutely. you need to know. Yeah. Like, but catch me. Exactly. Like that, that's an important In every one. language. Like catch me. <laughs> catch me. Now, <laughs> but what's really special, I think, about Luzia now is that it's going to go to Mexico next. Yes. And I'm looking right at you, Maho, because I'm I know so that's, your, that's your home country, <laughs> yes. right? You're from Mexico so, City? Yeah, I'm from Mexico I, I've City. I've been to Mexico City. It's a beautiful like? city. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> Thank uh, you it's so enormous. Much. Small place, right? <laughs> yeah, it is so big. I, was tell, I, I can't <laughs> remember what I was telling. I'd been in Sao Paulo, which is like as big as the world. It's, yes. You look out a window and you, it's never ending. They both make New York City look yeah, like uh, look like nothing. You, know, you can fit like 50 New York cities into it. But it's a beautiful, so, it's a beautiful thank city. Thank you so much. So, yeah. so the Mexico stint is going to be like four months, I think, after Boston. Yeah, right? Yes. And I feel like this is really cool to talk to you guys now because let's talk about the culture a little bit. I'm looking at the monitor there and there's the, this beautiful Aztec. Um, it's from the Aztec calendar in the back. Yes. There's um, the lighting and it's, it's Mexican essence of Mexico with the music and with the performance. Yeah, um, and I think there's a lot of things behind every act that the public don't know. For example, I, I was talking with my coach about the contortionist. He's Quetzalcoatl, that it's a god in Mexico oh, okay. with the, for the culture, that it's a, a snake with wings. But really? anybody know about that? Quetzalcoatl was a god, so I think we are paying it's tribute to god. him. Yes, with the candles, with the people. Right. Because he does look sort of reptilian in a sense. Yes, exactly. But what's interesting is here that that's actually a Mexican connection. Yes. It's not just Mexican in general. You're pulling in Mayan, you're pulling in all these different Mexican histories. Yes. All into one. Absolutely. Which and I was think fantastic. the Mexican people are going to know details yeah, about the show was, and they're going to appreciate it. Right. And I, one of the examples that comes to mind is the half man, half beast, or the fish head that yeah. comes out. Yeah, and it's yeah. a walk, walking person with a fish head. But I didn't realize until I read last night that this symbolizes the connection that the Mexican people have had with the animal culture throughout time. Yeah. And every detail is the pride of that region, which is pretty interesting. And so what we do at Cirque du Soleil is that for each of our shows, some are more story-based, some are more theme-based. I would say Luzia is very theme-oriented mm -hmm. with all the influence from Mexico that we're kind of mixed together to create a tapestry of a few tableaus or acrobatic scenes. But what we do is that everything will have a meaning for the creators, for the artists on stage, but then we don't tell the audience exactly what to think. We want you to be able to draw your own interpretation of what yeah. you're seeing. You certainly and, did that with me. And that's why, but that's why also the shows, the, you see, Luzia is only two years and a half old but we'll be traveling all around the world and that's why the shows appeal to an audience in Japan in Germany in Mexico in Australia is that we're not telling them what to think we're not necessarily saying it in English or in any specific language so then they can really have their own interpretation and connect with it in Mexico what uh, Maho is just uh, relaying is that what will be interesting is to see what the those reaction. aha moments of yes. okay well this is this is where we come this is our our culture yes so I'm excited. I want to talk a little bit about the show itself and how it progresses, not just every show, but month to month. Do the artists and athletes and, and uh, gymnasts and singers, does everyone bring in, say, hey, you know what? I did this thing last night. It's really awesome. I, we should incorporate that into the show somehow. How Does that stuff kind of happen kind of organically? Does it happen every day or... I think it does happen organically. So we have Lucia now, and the show will remain generally the same. But there's an evolution to it where we're living, breathing artists. New artists will come in with different talents, different backgrounds. So the acts will remain the same, but if you, we do have that freedom. And there's an openness to ideas for improvement, new tricks, new ways to do things. A new performer that has a, a bit of a different personality, you don't want to put them in the same box that the person before them was in. So they'll need to follow the same guidelines, but you can add that person's strength to the show.
You know what I really like? There's a guy behind you right now who's juggling. And he does this thing. Well, he takes like, I don't know, a hundred. Silios. Uh, uh, he takes like a hundred of those things. Yeah, I think and there's he keeps a hundred. So I think it's like eight. <laughs> he doesn't always succeed, but we're, everyone's rooting for him. This is real, and people will add things, and they'll try new things and take a challenge. And so I think that's why you come. It's more exciting. And when Silios decided to add another club, he's the first person in Cirque du Soleil to do seven clubs. To do so, seven? Yes. yes. Really? And so he sure decided it to do that. It looked like a hundred. It's well, right under a hundred. We have Silius practicing right now with the clubs. I want to say one thing that is incredible is with the music, when he goes through the audience, when he's juggling through with a crowd. I don't want to jinx him, but like, <laughs> come on. I, I was like, I kind of like the fact that I'm in the, the cheap seats back here. I can't. So that was amazing. I, yeah, he anyway. was pretty close. He went right by me. He scared yeah. the crap out of me, actually, yeah. when he did that. So... What I can't get out of my head really is Adagio Chorus. It's beautiful. an incredible signature. It's a hook. It's pop, but it's also Latin. It's beauty. Da, 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 da. Sorry. Forgive me. Um, That's great. <laughs> it's not that good. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Unsolicited, wow. that was beautiful. What did, what did, what did, uh, that was much better than Can you Ron. translate that? Now that now you know, that you've discovered uh -huh. that the sky you making this is up? crying. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sky is crying. You don't have to be. You don't have to be sad anymore. Ever, ever more. Yeah. Ever. Uh, nunca no. is ever. Yeah. <laughs> or never. Never, more. never, never again. Now never, that the never sky more. is crying. You do not need to ha be sad anymore. Now that you've discovered the sky is crying, yep. you don't need to be sad. Yes. And the ever, sky ever cries again. with that stream of water, yes. the, the water curtain that comes down. It's gorgeous. Who wrote that? Simon yeah. Carpentier, the composer. He went to Mexico to literally discover Mexico in the markets, mariachis, all type of Mexican music. So he's a Montreal guy yeah. That, yeah. that embedded himself down in Mexico. Well, or? basically, when he was when they were building the show, they wanted to work with Simon, and they sent him to Tijuana and different places in Mexico mm -hmm. where he was in touch with the the different musical scene over there. And then also, the director of the show is actually the one who wrote the lyrics. So his name is Daniel Finzi Pasca, and okay. he spent ten years of his life in Mexico, living in Mexico so he's the one who wrote all the lyrics that you hear in Spanish in the show were written by him but then the music was composed by Simon and his own interpretation of what Mexican sounds were and then really Maho and all of the musicians when they came I remember how the feeling just switched because during creation a lot of the acrobats arrived to the headquarters in Montreal before the musicians arrived and so we began practicing and we heard our music as it was composed but it was recorded and before our musicians got to touch it when they arrived the show came to life that's what gave us breath and life and excitement or sadness or sorrow whatever the emotion is at the moment in the song it gave us all new inspiration for our acts once they arrived and touched what um, was composed for Lucia and put their own touch and their own interpretation to all the music. Nothing like the live presence. Absolutely. And like we were saying in Adagio, Maho not only has to change maybe the tempo or do some improvisation if there's technical issues, but she can feel how we are and we're reacting to the public. So it's a very live being, our act is. So if one breath needs to take a bit longer because that's what we feel that day and that's what works on stage and that's what the audience is asking for. We feel each other and she gives that time to us and we can absorb that time in our movements as well. I also, I love the story. The guy coming out of the out of the plane and I mean, he's fantastic. Who's the, who's the, the, the tall guy who... Eric Kohler. Yeah, he's fantastic, first of all. Yeah. All the acting part and the facial expressions and the, the bringing in the audience to the story... Absolutely. ...is great. And he's amazing. He 
breaks the boundaries of language too because he's so physical in his movements and he never speaks. Well, that really. whistle yep. thing that exactly. he did. Exactly. Oh. But everyone understands. Everyone well, understands exactly I'm glad what he's he brought doing. That, the whistle thing up yeah. because it's a, it's a conduit for what he's trying to do and it feeds off each other. You just need the rhythm. You just need that one sound. Mm -hmm. We got, um, we got what he was, when he was scolding people exactly. by saying, you guys are terrible. These people are wonderful. You understood <laughs> it just by him blowing the whistle. Right. right. Yeah. We've talked with uh, Blue Man Group a year ago, and it reminds me that piece of it's a little more, it's a smaller room, it's organic, there's a lot of that risk taking with Blue Man, and no they don't speak. They don't speak. Right. And so right. it reminded me a lot of that. Of, but it's the way to him. communicate with eyes and body language, and he gets you to feel sorry for him, or mad at him, or root for him, and so he takes you through the journey that's Lucia. Yeah. What's next, do you think, after this production? For, for each of you. Have you thought that far ahead? <laughs> do, do, do you ever wake up in the morning and think, next year, am I going to do another show? What's next? Right now, I don't know. I'm recording my CD and I'm working in my music, but oh, I want to I wanna continue with Cirque. Yeah, steady job. <laughs> so stay in the family. Yeah, well, Lucia keeps touring. So Lucia is only two years and a half old, so Lucia will tour for close to 15 years. So if I was to stay for 15 years, <laughs> That's pretty she good can stay for that long. There you go. I see. So, oh so my there's, God. But I guess what, what you answered was, was kind of enlightening to me. So I realized that you have another life, too. You have other projects. Yeah, of course. What about you? Yeah, so as an acrobat, I think you always have to be thinking about what comes next because you doing an it's, album too. It's I'm working on my album. Sweet. It's not going as well <laughs> as my host, I love you, Kelly. but <laughs> it's only a whistle and acrobats. so far. We're gonna add some other uh, body percussion soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all kidding aside, what, what all else? Kidding what, aside. What are you doing? So we have opportunities here to continue training different disciplines physically, and I love taking advantage of that. And as long as I love being on stage and I feel like I'm still good at what I do, I will continue to be on the stage. And Lucia is a great place for me yes. now. But I think, like I was saying, as an acrobat, you have to think what comes next because sometimes you have to stop doing that for reasons beyond your control. And so I uh, love... You're really young. Thank you. You're fine. Yeah. You got plenty of years. There's no video here. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. But you can see different paths within Cirque du Soleil and you can learn from people here too. Right. And so I'm very interested in the artistic side. And so if that's assisting with the direction of shows or creation of shows, there's possibilities mm -hmm. within Cirque and within different companies to do that and use all of the experience I've had being on the performance side and transferring that to behind the scenes the on the other side yeah. of the stage. Yeah. Well, talk, Ron, I don't cool. know if you know this. Yeah. I, used, I used to be an actor. Get out of here. I know. I'm kidding. Did I'm you kidding. do anything like this I'm, in Cirque? No, I never did anything like this. But there's the disease of the theater. Even though I've been away from it, for, I've been away from it for a long time. But every once in a while, like, I see you guys on stage and I'm like, yeah, you get a little pain, right. you know. Once you've done it, you can't get out of your system. Right. So whether or not you're going to be on stage or behind the scenes, it's a life in theater. That's why they call it a life in theater. Exactly. Because you never give it up when you Well, when and you it sounds like Cirque is a culture in and of itself. I think it's great. You guys are a family. Yeah, we so. really are a family here. Yes. And I'm sure you like all families. You got good days and your bad days. <laughs> right? As long as no one's dropped. Exactly. <laughs> then they're good. No hard feelings. You're actually humans. <laughs> um, good luck. In Thank Mexico, you. I think it's going to be amazing. Thank you so much. I wish I could go. I would. I think we should go. I would you love to see it in Mexico. <laughs> I mean, I think that'd be real. I imagine the crowd there is going to be so different from this crowd here because it's it's absolutely. Well, what do you think? What do you expect from the crowd? Yeah, I think the public is going to be great. Is the American crowd? Is the Boston crowd? Is it kind of like no. they you know they clap we love a lot? The but Boston yes, crowd, yes. and so, you so feel great. it in different cities. If I understand what you're saying, is it there's that pride that this is about more than just Mexican music and artwork and lighting. We're talking about thousands of years, Mayan influences, Aztec. But yeah, I think that's going to be great. Safe travels. Thank you. Thanks for singing, by the way. Yes, that was beautiful. Yeah, and amazing. Kelly, thanks for having Chuck to jump up in the air. And You're welcome. Have I'm have sorry you couldn't you. see that. That was <laughs> so cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. yeah I, you didn't I, even notice. I oh. know. Did you, so wait, did you catch me or did I catch you? We have What's, to go back to the tape. All right, that's great. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, thank guys. You so much. Thank you.
Okay, before we continue with our conversation, how would you like to join us in creating great conversations that inspire and connect? Patreon is a membership platform that provides a way for creators like us to build relationships and provide exclusive experiences to subscribers or patrons. We've been self-financed since we got off the ground in June of 2016, but in order to continue to fully invest all we can in each episode, we need your patronage. For more information, please go to patreon.com forward slash above the basement. Now, as we mentioned, we also spoke with football freestylers Laura Biondo and Abu Traore, as well as New England Revolution forward Femi Hollinger Jansen. So let's continue the conversation. Abu? Yeah. Laura? Yep. Femi? Yes. All right. Femi, that wasn't fair up there. They had been practicing that for a long time, <laughs> and you were under a lot of pressure to get that stuff right. <laughs> you can't do this stuff like on the field. Someone will tackle you by the time you like get it under your neck, right? So that's not fair. I had like two minutes prepare, so you know, I, but, you know, they taught me a few things, and they were great instructors, so mm-hmm. I, I thank them. For that. But he did great. It was great. Is he a quick learner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. super right. quick, super quick. Do you find that maybe uh, during one of the next games you can incorporate some of those moves? Yeah, I'm thinking I'll probably try to flip it on my neck and do the spin. You know, kind of distract the opponents. Exactly, so, they won't know where you're going. So. <laughs> And Laura, you're wearing both hats in a sense, right? Because you have done professional soccer in Italy, is that right? Yeah, correct. And and so you, you're sort of speaking both languages in a sense. Yeah, also Abu, he used to play soccer as well. He played in the Paris Saint-Germain Juniors. And so where, we both where did you play Abu? I played in the Paris Saint-Germain Junior, in, in the Paris? football uh, yeah, academy. So And then I had the injury, so I have to stop the football and I... And I follow my brother. The injury put you on the sideline for about a year yeah. to, to recuper- recuperate yeah, from that? so I could not practice anymore yeah. football in a high level. Yeah. And then uh, I discover football freestyle, soccer freestyle, and then I start to practice on the street everywhere yeah. in Paris. Plus you have this awesome blue stripe, so you fit right in. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a prerequisite when you audition, you have to have a blue stripe. <laughs> So wait, freestyle, you may be wondering why, why we're here. We talk about music, but I think we're crossing a lot of artistic domains right now. We're in movement, we're in uh, control, we're in creativity, we're in, we're in music meets arts and, and sport. It's kind of a, a really cool day. We're really excited to be here to connect all that. When you think about freestyle, something else comes to mind too. Anybody feel that they like some improvisation in, in music at all? Is there any connection there? Well, definitely with freestyle because it's not like I'm going to start improvising something because I don't know how to sing. Definitely with the freestyle, the whole scene, it's, it really connects with freestyle soccer as well. And the type of music, even the hip hop and all the, that improvising, it really blends because it's basically the same concept also in freestyle you just come why, up with tricks you come why up do you with think routines. yeah why is that i guess it's that way to express yourself without any boundaries and just letting your creativity go wild it's somehow. flow right it's yeah. like in the moment exactly so it's like that also with the tricks like you can like choose what tricks you're going to do but at the same time you can just be training and just like go with the flow and is it choreography can... between both of you with the music i mean does the music play a major part a major role in what you're doing on stage or is it just kind of the ambiance that no the music plays a very important role i mean in our act we have a structure and we have blocks within the music that we follow we don't really follow exactly every trick on every note but we do have several notes several hits in the music that we like to get okay but definitely the music plays an important part because also our music for our act is very energetic it's very it's very how would I say it? it's very it kind of rock and roll but it's it really like the tempo on the moment so the tempo of the music yeah, yeah. and it's a very energetic song so yeah. we love it we felt that and Femi do you have any music interests I heard that there's uh, some locker room uh, shenanigans that may go on is that, is that public knowledge yeah I mean I'm pretty sure everyone knows you know we play all kinds of music in the locker room what I do you like, play in the locker room what gets you guys going like for the big game uh, I'd have to say you know Drake right now is the biggest uh, artist in the locker room right. any particular song that you guys play that's like a rich or is it all just kind of what comes to mind? Just kind of what comes to mind. We kind of mix it up and, you know, whatever we're feeling, we go to it. And for you, with the uh, break dancing, I haven't seen that in a while, <laughs> but it's awesome. You got the ball on your ankle and you're holding that on there. Is that like something that you were doing on your own and you brought into it? I learned uh, on my own. Uh, I just saw some people doing the break dancing. I say, okay, this trick is, is, is fun. So I can maybe add on the football freestyle and uh, I try to imagine where I can put or holding the ball. And then I say, okay, maybe I can hold on the feet. And then I start to practice. Uh, it takes me one year and a half 
to get uh, the move. I saw. I was watching everybody as you were doing that, and yeah. everyone's mouth is just <laughs> wide open. Like they don't know how you're doing it. That, Very retro now. Yeah, that, that, that's, it's that's all I like back, on baby. the football freestyle. It's always imagine the creativity and doing something you never see before. And it's great. We really enjoyed the show. And I want to thank you guys for talking with us. Good luck this year. Appreciate it. We're, thank we're, you, we're for you. Thank you, Laura. Thank, thank you, you, Abu. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank we'll you very you much. We would like to thank all of the artists for speaking with us, as well as Darren DeLuca and Francis Jalbert for getting this conversation organized. Get your tickets to Cirque while they are still in Boston until August 12th at CirqueDuSoleil.com forward slash Luzia, L-U-Z-I-A. Go to AboveTheBasement.com where you can join us on Patreon, sign up for our newsletter, listen and subscribe to our podcast, like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and look at all the nice pictures we post on Instagram. We are everywhere. On behalf of Ronnie and myself, thanks for listening. Tell your friends, and remember, Boston music, like its history, is unique.